In a world after the recent FCC vote to repeal Title II status from ISPs, net neutrality, net neutrality, 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 the internet exploded with doomsday prophecies of epic proportions. Oh, no. <laughs> Paying for social media. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Blocked Thai ladyboy porn. <laughs> no! Strange portals to the upside down. <laughs> Giant bug aliens invading Earth. <laughs> Rick and Negan. Coral. All because of this douchey Indian dude bro named Ajit Pai. AKA Chairman of the FCC. He also released a troll video making fun of the hysteria surrounding the FCC vote. It was kind of funny, but dickish. <laughs> so the internet told him to go shut his pie hole. <laughs> Get it? Because. Pie hole, Ajit Pai, his name, Pie, Pie hole. I'm gonna die alone. I'm gonna die alone. But, like any controversy, with all the hysteria surrounding this divisive topic, I knew there had to be more than what the hypothetical memes were telling me, so I fell down a research rabbit hole! <laughs> and let me tell you, the rabbit hole is deep. Dude, this is a totally deep hole. That's what she said. <laughs> Bill and Ted aren't wrong. The rabbit hole just keeps going and going and going. Get it? Because rabbit hole, energizer bunny, bunny, rabbit, rabbit hole. <laughs> I pray for death. I pray for death. The concept of net neutrality itself can actually be traced back to the Roosevelt presidency when the FCC was in its infant stages and way before the internet was actually conceptualized. But before I get into my research, I will say this. I am not coming from a strong stance for or against net neutrality. The purpose of this video is not to sway you one way or another. In fact, I hope to only inform you on as many net neutral nooks and crannies as I can. And by all means, correct me if I'm mistaken, comment your thoughts below, form your own opinions, and open up a dialogue. All I ask for is as much civility as the internet can provide. Oh Jesus. So what the f is net neutrality? Net neutrality, or N squared as I call it, <laughs> I called it that once, just now. I'm so lonely. So I'm so lonely. Net neutrality is the broadly defined term that basically says the internet treats all of its traffic equally, not giving advantages to major players like big ISPs such as AT&T, Time Warner, or Comcast. Or internet giants like Google, Netflix, Facebook, Twitter, and we will get to Google's fast lane later. The basic idea is that net neutrality keeps ISPs from providing a pay-for-play service. I.e., in a perfect world, Comcast wouldn't be able to give a minimum upload speed to Netflix while promoting its own streaming service in ultra 4K sexy beast, beast mode. mode. With no data cap on cell or home internet. N squared is also said to make it so websites cannot block lawful content. So child porn is blocked, as it freaking should be, but everything else is left to the websites themselves. So basically, everything from Steven Universe fan theories. He left his family behind! Cookie cut! To government documents. It's the same treatment in theory. Side note, Slice of Otaku and Allstruck Fox are the two best Steven Universe theorists, in my humble opinion. IMHO, bitches. So, where did this all begin? Well, our current story begins in 2014 during Verizon v. FCC. Well, it kind of starts in 2010 when, well... It actually kind of starts in 2005 when the FCC established four principles of open internet. To remain on task, I'm going to skip the boring details and sum it up. 2005, the FCC established four principles of the open internet. 2008, George W. Bush was all, heh, heh, net new, new, uh, the interweb is Switzerland, and tacos rule. And he enforced some things, which Obama later built on. In 2009, the FCC added a fifth rule of no discrimination. Like, not a racial thing, a website thing. None of this was an instant legal obligation, it was just a general guideline. 
Then, in 2010, the FCC established the Open Internet Order. The Open Internet Order creates two classes of internet access, fixed line providers and wireless net. They're super strict on home internet service providers and more lenient on cell phone companies. They basically enforce these three rules. One, transparency, aka AT&T and all those big old companies we love, must disclose if they're going to attempt to rail us from behind, usually in fine print. Two, no blocking. This goes for all cell phones and home internet. They cannot block lawful content, application services, or non-harmful devices, or apps that compete with their voice or video telephony services. Side note, I wasn't being cute. Telephony is a real word, and I probably didn't even pronounce it right. Three, no unreasonable discrimination, which means they can't throttle one service in favor of another. So basically, the FCC made it law. I will link everything below if you're interested. However, by 2014, there was much dispute on the FCC's use of authority. When Verizon and the FCC battled it out in the Court of Appeals, the final ruling was the FCC doesn't have authority to enforce their own rules. Why? Because they previously classified broadband providers under Title I of the Communications Act of 1934. Told you the rabbit hole was deep. That's what she said. The ramifications of this ruling are intense. One judge, a Reagan appointee, had a dissenting opinion on the ruling and, in fact, said the FCC should be able to enforce the open internet order. Had this ruling gone his way, it would have preserved net neutrality and there would most likely not be hysteria or much debate today. But when push came to shove, the FCC was thrust into a corner and could only assert its authority to enforce one of the rules. That rule being transparency. So basically, AT&T's gotta tell us before they bang us. Thus, the FCC reclassified ISPs under Title II utilities, and the 2015 Obama-era net neutrality was born. What not a cute little net neutrality baby. Supporters of net neutrality claim without the most recent 2015 provisions, internet service providers like Verizon would have the ability to throttle speeds, block websites, and show preferential treatment to specific services. Though that is still illegal, but the entity that enforces it would have to be the Federal Trade Commission, if they are even allowed. These claims aren't completely unwarranted. You can see a Reddit graphic showing which companies attempted shady practices over the last 15 or so years. After the ruling in 2014, it would seem even more more likely. However, what supporters fail to remember is the power of the people. These providers are terrified of backlash. They're scared shiznit lists. And even with the 2014 ruling, the FCC does still maintain authority to command big internet service providers to remain transparent in their intent. Any possible changes to services must face a 60-day waiting period, at the very least. Then, and only then, will they become a reality, if they even do. The backlash alone could be enough for a company to lose large chunks of business and create national hysteria. Say what you will about America, we know how to overreact. Like gravity, all it takes is a little push. And let's be real for a moment. Remember 2014, before Obama era net neutrality? How it was a vast wasteland of paying for social media? Super throttled speeds? Blocked porn sites? No? Oh? Not ringing a bell? Because that didn't happen. Sure, internet service providers did their best to strap on a 12 inch and give it to us in the butt, but they were shut down a majority of the time. AT&T was caught not allowing Skype on its iPhone and throttling Skype online, and they were forced to stop. So don't empty out your local grocery stores in preparation for the apocalypse just yet. The internet isn't going anywhere. It will be okay. Sip some liquor, smoke, vape, calm yourself. <laughs> Very good. Milo Yiannopoulos, love or hate him, and I know a lot of you guys probably hate him, and a lot of you guys probably love him, and a lot of you guys have probably had sex with him. He had an interesting snippet from a Q&A, wearing short shorts, Milo, bruh. Trigger warning, this is a short clip from an anti-net neutrality standpoint. If you're easily offended by things you don't agree with, you might want to turn the channel or press stop. It's a video, so. Don't worry, I will actually counter his points, but I believe what he says here is worth listening to. Uh, what are your thoughts on net neutrality? The whole... Oh, the you're all mess. wrong about it. Wow! ...organizations that are pushing net neutrality um, and advocating for more government control of the internet have told you two big lies. The first one is that the government should regulate the internet rather than the uh, free market. It is much better, in my view, to have customers and private companies negotiate their own relationship and the market to decide what it can bear, what people are prepared to put up with, and for competition to produce the best uh, results. 
And second of all, they have told you that this is, um, you know, about about making sure that there's an open, free you know, internet of uh, an equality internet where everyone gets equal access to whatever, whatever. That has never been the case. Every service provider, every server already shapes data. They already shape traffic, excuse me. All of the stuff that net neutrality is designed to eradicate, it never will, because Vodafone is always going to mess around with things. What are your, your cell networks over here, whatever, Telstra, whatever, they're always going to send some things faster than others, and that will never change. Net neutrality is a, is a cosmetic announcement on the one hand, but really what it represents is the license for the federal government, for the FCC, to wade in and interfere in the relationship between private people and their, and their providers, and, and to stop companies from providing uh, richer, better, tailored packages to you, the consumer. It is about more government control over a critical utility. So if you're one of those people who reflexively thinks net neutrality sounds like a good idea, you're right, it does sound like a good idea, but you're wrong. It's terrible, and it's just another mechanism of government control, and I want the government out of that completely, out of that relationship. Just leave us to deal with the, deal with the uh, service providers, and if they screw up, we'll sign up with somebody else. There is one massive point he seems to have glossed over. Who am I and over 100 million others like myself going to switch to? Sure, you can honestly say the majority of the country does have more than one option for internet, but by majority, I mean 49%. 41% of Americans only have one or two options. And when you factor in overall speed, the options of one to three providers drops to one serious provider and two slow assholes. How does Milo expect us to just choose? It's very possible competition and innovation could come about without Obama-era net neutrality. And if so, then I say good. But I'm not sold on either side of this simplistic explanation. I do love the idea of free markets, private companies with direct consumer relations, and other possibilities. But without competition, it does raise alarms and justifies some of the outrage. However, Milo does make a good point about fast lanes in that they still and will always exist. Don't try to get back to Google's fast lane. Google has a fast lane built in. So does Netflix. This is because Google and others within the internet aren't held to the same standards as internet service providers. And if I delve into the intricacies of this topic, my video will be so long. That's what she said. So I will skip it and perhaps later focus on that subject in a different video. Huge issue with net neutrality is the design and function of the internet. Since it is a common network infrastructure that supports and transmits all things, video, yeah, voice, yeah, data, yeah, you can't wave a magic wand at the federal level to make everything equal and expect that things will just continue to work smoothly. Oculus for Paris. It wasn't built or designed that way, so it doesn't work that way. If you want to incentivize internet service providers to continue to build out their infrastructure and increase bandwidth capacity, classifying them as a utility under Title II is probably not the way. However, I claim no knowledge on how one would encourage competition. And as I said, this isn't to sway you one way or another. I simply want to show you doomsday profits that the world is an ending while showing you free market capitalists that the market is currently flawed to a point where maybe the little guy? I wish I was the monster you think I am. Doesn't stand much of a chance. It's a nuanced topic, am I right? One thing I find super duper interesting in all of this mess is how identity politics has infected our Congress, the FCC, the President's administrations for the last 16 years, and us. Why can't these entities have a legitimate release of information on net neutrality? Tell our uninformed minds what it is, what its intent is, what is problematic about it, and not throw their individual political bias at us? Why can't they seem to even agree or compromise? And how do they expect us, the people, to remotely grasp the inner workings of this 322-page document riddled with technical jargon and lawyer speak? I, like every American, fully understand the ramifications of giving regulatory power to the government, right? <laughs> Guys? Even after more than a month's research, I am still learning. A number of alternative thinking liberal and conservative web magazines have begun to posit ideas of thwarting reliance on Big Papa. 
By that, I mean we don't have to rely on AT&T, Time Warner, Verizon, Comcast, or any other big brand ISP. Motherboard, a tech publication, posits we can build our own community web. They promise to go in depth on this subject with future articles, but I am interested in this idea. I think if every smaller municipality began to build its own small infrastructure, the bigger ISPs would see a dramatic decline in business and attempt to lease their already built fiber optics to smaller startup companies. Hey, I could be wrong. I could be right. I don't know. But what I do know, this hysteria, doxing a jeep pie, putting his family in danger, and the general Orwellian attitudes from both sides, with an intense blind eye to their own bias and fault, isn't helping. It's not creating knowledgeable activism. It's causing panic. It's causing fear. It's simply put, wrong. If you are pro-net neutrality, do your due diligence and bring innovation to the table. If you are anti-net neutrality, you've probably been taken out by the stampede of groupthink on the internet, so peace be with you. I'll visit your tombstone very shortly. But the main point is, you don't know everything, and especially on this subject. The more I learn, the harder it is to really decide what side I stand on, but the less hysterical I become. I admit, I was for net neutrality tenfold. I bought into every article, every headline, all the rhetoric. But when you step back and look at it, it's picking which multi-billion dollar corporation you believe. Huh, do I believe Google or AT&T? I began to realize I didn't have any understanding of those who were against net neutrality. I didn't know their stance, which means I had weak opinions. How could I believe so strongly in net neutrality, but not know the opposition's stance? So I looked it up, and I countered their points, and then I countered my own points. And then I spent over a month reading about every possible detail. I have no life, ladies. Can you believe I'm single? Look, I understand the alarm. I felt the alarm. I get that these are divisive times with a divisive presidential tweetathon every day. I do the best tweets. Believe me. I've been called a Trump wannabe, a libtard, cuck, alt-right, fascist scum, Antifa apologist. These things do not coexist in one person, yet I'm apparently all of them. So I'm issuing a challenge to you. Take the subject of net neutrality and defend your opposition. If you're pro-net neutrality, take the anti-stance. If you're anti-net neutrality, take the pro-stance. You have nothing to lose from this. If anything, it will strengthen your own views. Anyways, guys, that's where I'm going to end this video. Thank you so much for watching the whole thing. You are a trooper. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Leave comments down below. Follow me on Twitter, at Paul Alcohol. Snapchat, I'm also Paul Alcohol. Uh, join me on Facebook. And as always, I'm looking forward to the conversation ahead. Tell me where you stand. Much love, my babies. Mwah.